People, 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 welcome back to another pre-recorded podcast. And man, this is a special one because this is in regards to my TEDx. Now, of course, I always say that. Uh, so many people who are probably tuning into my podcast for the first time, and you guys are probably going to hear it in probably one day, one week, one month, one year, ten years. However long from now, I'm doing a TEDx. I'm doing a TEDx on my life in Thailand. Now, it's a little interesting. Because I had a wonderful conversation just a few a few days ago because you guys are actually listening to this on Tuesday evening. I had this conversation on Saturday afternoon. So I work with a writer, and this writer, he's a very interesting character. He's written quite a few things already. And he gave me a nice rundown of what I could write my book on. And the thing is, my TEDx is going to be predicated on this. So he said, listen, if you look at it this way. It has four sections, four chapters, okay, well, which culminates into about 12 sections. You say you could do it however you want, but it's always the preface. It's boy meets girl, boy and girl breaks up, boy and girl resolves it in the end, okay? These are the four sections. So I started thinking about it, and I'm like, okay. So it's – I love it because now it's starting – to formulate what i'm going to talk about is starting to formulate and you guys are going to hear it for the first time in two weeks because i'm going to debut it it's not going to be downloadable because i don't want it to be downloadable or these specific um organizations that i'm going to be applying to next year they're not going to want me to um what is it what am i trying to say they're not going to yeah if they already hear it they're gonna be like oh well maybe it's not too good i want it to be as a surprise so You guys, for the first time, are going to hear this TEDx in two weeks. And so, basically, the TEDx, I really want to capture the audience. Now, of course, I've been taught this for so long, you know, in communication classes in college and whatnot. And within the first 10 seconds, if you don't have the audience, it's done. In the first two pages of the book, in that preface, you need to capture the audience. That cover means absolutely everything. And so before I get back into the TEDx, I want to revert back to, of course, this particular colleague that I work with. And he's like, listen, take a look at this book, Arsenio. What do you see? You see a polar bear. You see a polar bear. So is the book going to be about polar bears? No, this is an English book, but there's a polar bear on the front cover. What the hell is going on? And I said, well, that's a good point. He said, what? Look, look at the top. What does it say? Unlock. Unlock what? Unlock what? The, col- the polar bear? The tundra? What are you unlocking? What does the entire book have to do? If you have a picture of a polar bear on the front of it. And I said, well, that's an excellent point. See, my book, I, I don't, I, I don't, the, the book cover is going to be insane. Okay, that's for the most part. I'm so excited how it's going to look and I'm so happy. And he's like, you know what? You need to have it tangible. And he said, stay away from the ghostwriters. And I was contemplating actually using a ghostwriter because he said, well, they don't know the story like you do. And I was saying this to myself before, too. And I was like, well, you know what? That's another very, very valid point because no one can tell my story like I can, period. So I hurry up and said, OK, enough with the ghostwriter. I wasn't really considering it. I just wanted to see. And it just felt like it was too fake. It felt like, you know, she didn't really care about this and that and that she was just trying to make a sound. I'm like, get out of here. I'm doing this on my own. And then I'll just find an editor to edit it and say, OK, all right, your book is good to go. And then there it is. Um, and so he was telling me a couple other things about Amazon, Kindle, ebooks, all that stuff. And he said, of course, in the first two pages, if you don't have them, it's over. And of course, the cover, I'm going to put so many different things on there. And it's not going to be about a pity party. It's, and he told me, he's like, what you need to do at the very end, they want something. The readers want something. The people who are listening, who will be listening at your TEDx, they want something. They want something to take with them, put it in their pocket, and walk away with that forever. And I'm like, okay, perfect. So, of course, I said, no, I'm not going to make it a pity party. He's like, be careful. I'm like, listen, no, I'm letting them, I'm letting people have it. What I've endured, you can't take away what I've endured there, period. But it's not going to be a pity party. It's going to be what was the transformation. Now, you guys are going to be listening to this Tuesday evening. If I believe. Yeah, Tuesday evening. So the best part about this, this is going to debut about at 630 when I actually go on break time at my, uh, what is it, at my job and whatnot. And this is going to be published. I'm going to publish it along with 
a blog, I think. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, it just depends how, how well I, you know, how well I do today. Um, and yeah, so what am I trying to do? I just went way off topic. God damn it. Excuse my French. Um, so yeah, I decided to, what the hell am I talking about? Okay, let's back up a little bit. Preface, I talked about the preface and he said, oh yeah, they want something to take with them. And I said, okay. I'm not going to make it a pity party. I'm going to make it a vision party. I'm going to tell it for how it was, my experience here. But at when was the changing point, Arsenio? When was the changing point? Well, October 2014 is going to have to be one of the biggest parts. That's going to be the disaster. I guess the third section of my TEDx. That's going to be probably around the 12-minute mark or whatnot because this is going to be, what, an 18-minute presentation. So this is probably going to be around the 12-minute mark or something like that. But then what did I start doing to change my life completely? And there it was. I mean, of course, following October 2014, it was April 2015. And here I was laying on my bed watching a Lisa Nichols video, watching her cry on stage about all the trials and tribulations and her not having enough money to buy pampers for her son. So many other things. And right then and there, I cried. And that biochemistry was disrupted. And next thing you know, she put a picture on, of course, the Steve Harvey show. And she was like, this is one of my favorite mentors. If you guys don't know him, his name is Les Brown. And before that, I've been listening to, of course, a YouTube. Before that time, probably around March, I've been, I was listening to a YouTube video of, um, what was it? Of a voice. I didn't know who the voice was, but he was so inspiring. And, of course, it was from this YouTuber who made a cluster of, like, these motivational videos. And boom, Les Brown. He had a couple of sections. Now, of course, this was back in 2015. I could find pretty much full presentations of him anywhere on YouTube. But back in 2015, no. So I started going by his little episodes. He had about nine different episodes. This YouTuber, of course, uploaded it. Listened to number one, number two, number three, number four. So, of course, I'm going to have to put this all together and make it a little bit short. But then, of course, the threats. I've had a a number of death threats in 2015 from people who worked for Thai Airways literally in Bangkok telling me they would try to have me blacklisted and they would uh, have dangerous people kick their face in. Their father was the chief of immigration. So many ridiculous things. Like, I'm calling it for what I see. This is what I've experienced. But then it came from a botched trip. This was the turning point. A botched trip and something told me library and something told me the biggest shopping plaza in Bangkok. So I went there and there it was. Paulo Coelho's Alchemist and Napoleon Hill's Law of Success. Later followed Jack Canfield's Success principles. And in there, in principle number five, it said, take 100% responsibility. And it, and I think principle number four was, believe in yourself. Before I read that, I went to Vietnam, went inside the Remnants War Museum, crying inside from seeing like the tragedy. And I'm probably not going to talk about this in there because this is more about me. But these are the things that started disrupting a lot And then, of course, at my primary job, having the things that happened to me almost, you know, having one guy who just hated me so much because I had so much more work than him. And I wasn't talking to him. I wasn't bitching like him. I wasn't in the bitch party like him and all these other things. But then it just slowly started to climb. And so I'm going to have to formulate all of this into my TEDx. So what I'm trying to say here in my podcast, preface number one, I'm taking everyone on a visualization because the first 10 seconds is the most powerful. So I'm going to say... Guys, thank you so much for allowing me to be here today. And you know what? I want everyone to close their eyes. Close your eyes. That's right. Close your eyes. I'm not going to do anything. And it's funny because everyone's going to start to laugh. You'll have some laughs. You might have some people who are like, what the hell? Uh, But then I'm going to take you on a visualization. You're walking down the streets about 830 at night. You're in an arcade. A lot of shops around. People walking around. People taking the motorbikes, driving, stuff like that. There's a table. Where five women are sitting. They make eye contact with you. Probably from about 10 meters away. They all stand up. And they all disperse. Three go inside the building that's right next to the table. Two cross the street to go inside another building. I don't make anything of it. But after I pass the table. All five of those ladies come back to sit down. And that snap, everyone's going to snap out of that visualization. It's going to be more in-depth, of course, because I'm going to put more of an environmental feel into it. And I'm going to say, welcome to my life. 
in Thailand. And the thing is, I'm going to say, you guys are you guys are probably feeling a range of emotions like I was. I felt minute. And I'm going to emphasize that T. And, and it's funny because I'm going to add so much humor and they're going to feel this pain and they're going to feel this. And I might even like tear up a little bit because October 2014 was the massive turning point. That's going to be phase three. Phase two, I'm still, uh, it's going to be the introduction leading up to a couple things. And then the welcoming party. Is going to be phase four and how I was able to snap out of it. Now, I'm still trying to figure out what the title is going to be. But, guys, it's all coming together. And you guys are going to hear it for the first time in two weeks. So, guys, stay tuned. I'm so excited about it. And I just got this big smile on my face because, man, when I'm able, when I'm going to be able to tell my story which with such ferocity. Oh, my God. It's going to capture so many different people. And it's going to be so amazing i'm still trying to figure out what's the perfect place to do this because again can't do it in asia asian people don't want to hear this they don't want to hear the truth sorry i mean a lot of you are probably listening to this right now but it is the truth how the hell am i gonna go to china and talk about something like this they don't give a damn it's gonna have to be like in india or north africa and of course can't go to europe they don't want to hear this either i gotta go to a place that's a a quite diverse and that I'm able and I'm able in this very yeah yeah extreme diversity because I want a range of people. If it's just one group, they're not gonna give a damn. If it's in the Philippines, they're not gonna give a damn. If it's in Thailand, they'll probably arrest me. <laughs> because it's too truthful. You know what I mean? But this is my story, and I'll just ha- I'll have all that, of course, taking it'll take care of itself coming up in the new year and whatnot. And I'll keep you guys updated. But in two weeks, you guys are going to hear the beginning of my journey. Oh, and thank you so much, guys. I just really wanted to just oh, give you guys a nice rundown of it formulating the TEDx coming together. And you guys are going to be excited, man, because in two weeks, you guys are going to hear that debut. So stay tuned, baby. And until then, of course, guys, thank you for tuning back into a pre recorded podcast. And as always, this is your host, Arsenio. Over and out.